Good day. As you can see, I am not at the plot. I'm in our front room. Those were our beans. So on the right were the Madeira Maroon. On the left were the runner beans, the beans of the runner beans that we got from Shaz. And then in the big bowl were Canadian white and three gigantes, our huge harvest of gigantes. So those gigantes seeds have, I think, most probably almost halved in size during the drying process. And we're keeping just those three seeds to grow on for next year. Fingers crossed. Otherwise, I may have to catch some from other people. Anyway, that sound of those beans rattling and pouring through your fingers into tin and ceramic and on a tray. I adore that sound. It's um, a sort of mixture of the hope of what we're going to grow next year, mixed with the fantastic stews that I know that those beans will make over the coming winter months. So I just, I just adore that sound. Now, seed drying. What those seeds have had so far is they've been dried on the pod on the plant, brought home, left in their pods for about a week, I think. Then I have podded the beans, taken the pods back to put in our compost. So that's now in our compost bin. And the beans have been drying in those bowls, or in some cases, they've been on a, a plate or a tray for a good two, almost three weeks now. The next step is, once you know they're absolutely bone dry, is putting them into a glass jar, sealing that glass jar, and then putting those into the freezer. I know you've heard this before, but I'll just carry on where I am. By putting it into the freezer, that kills any bean fly or other midges that might be in the beans. So you won't have those hatching through your beans and creating completely worthless beans for you, either for seed saving or for eating. So they stay in the freezer for three days and then you take them out of the freezer. These are Madeira Maroon that have been in the freezer for three, in fact, they had been in the freezer for four days. I took them out of the freezer and just left the jar fully sealed like this is to, um, to get to room temperature. As Vivi says, what you don't want to do is open that jar lid and let the sort of any humid air rush into the jar before you put the, the lid back on. So it's now come up to room temperature. So it's been out for a day. So I've taken the lid off. And what I will be doing is I'll be popping a silica sachet in here, sealing it up again, and then keeping those in our fridge. If you want to keep them outside of the fridge, then just make sure that they're in a place where they're not going to, they're going to have air around them. So put them into a paper envelope, something like that, and keep them in a cool, dark place, preferably. And then hopefully you will have plenty of beans to um, rehydrate. I was going to say regurgitate, <laughs> rehydrate for um, any stews that you want to use them for over winter. And obviously you will have that bean to sow in, let's say, sort of March, April, May time to have more harvest for next year. So yeah, that's it for today. I was going to do this segment down at the plot, but when I started um, getting myself together to go out, it was so wet. I thought, no, just do it at home. There we are. I hope to see you at the plot tomorrow. There's a few small jobs that I want to do at the plot. So hopefully in the morning, I'll be able to get down there and show you what I'm doing. Bye for now. Good day. 
still prepping these two beds. I've raked them this morning. The chicken pellets I put down have, uh, or chicken manure pellets, I put down have really melted into the soil now. I do need to take this bit of cardboard away from the edge, so I'll try and remember to do that today. I'm also going to be harvesting some more turnips. We go in there. Two nice turnips there. The turnips are doing particularly well. I don't know if you can see in there. No, you can't. But yeah, the turnips are doing really well and are absolutely lovely. These are snowball turnips. So yeah, I've raked to that ground, getting it ready for onions in this bed and garlic in that bed. And what I've also started doing is weeding this area. Now, all I'm doing is pulling out the roots or as many of the roots as I can. I've done this bit and you can see there's still roots in there, but the bigger roots like these roots I'm pulling out. That there is a gravel tray full of cooch grass and bindweed and some sank foil. When I have done this whole area just on my knees pulling out what I can, I'm then going to put that tarpaulin back on or the banner actually back on and just leave it for a couple of weeks and then as I said the other day start thinking about how far I want these beds to come out with further growing space. I'm not I'm not sure I mean this is where the bags were of butternut squash that didn't do well and the tomato cane started here so I'm thinking about maybe starting the bed here having this as a path and this is additional growing what I will do is put some planks out once I've got the banner down got this weeded and the banner down so that I can live with it for a few weeks I think whatever this area at the end of this bed will be narrower than those two beds, the one that's empty and the one that has got those grow bags sitting on it at the moment, simply because I want to make sure I have enough space here to walk through. As you know, the shed is there, the edged bed or the raised bed is there so however far I want to come out is actually decided by the amount of space I need here to get through but hey ho that's for another day now I'm going to put that tray of weeds into our perennial weed bin and carry on weeding I don't think they ever made that film, did they? Carry on weeding. Maybe we could all make that together. There we are. That's six trays, gravel trays of cooch grass and bindweed and sank foil into our perennial weed compost bin and the vinyl back down for a few weeks at least maybe a bit longer maybe into mid to the end of november but again i'm really pleased to have got this job done i guess i'm sort of thinking which bed do i prep first do i prep this bed or do i prep 
that bed over there. Hmm. Anyway, that can wait for another day. Right. See you again soon. Bye. Good day. Just come down to water the polytunnel and notice that the saffron crocus are beginning to come up, which is great. However, squirrel, I assume, has dug some out. Look at those roots. So I'm going to have to put those back in. So I'm just literally going to put them back sort of in there facing upwards and then cover cover with soil and then think maybe maybe I'll put one of these over here just for the time being to keep the squirrels off yeah I'll definitely do that good day I thought we'd start where we left off rather sporadically yesterday as you can see, that's my shadow there. It is really, really bright today. This is everything we have growing in the poly. And it's just growing really, really well. It does need a water. Let me sort of go in and shut the door. Yeah, so this ground, it's damp but not quite damp enough for the amount of growth that is going on. So I'm going to give it a light watering. Everything in here is doing well. The coriander there, um, we're going to start, or we've started harvesting from that, so that's really great. Nothing in the wild garlic bucket yet, or pot rather. And if we just move up here, these are the lettuce that I pricked out last week. Again, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna need some water, but are doing well and have um, recovered from the pricking out really well, which is great. Got a plane going over now, so I'm just going to pause for a moment. Now outside. This is Kelly's Cheeky Prince, and I've decided that I'm going to take these out today, or this out today. It's not going to do anything now. There is a tiny one forming just there, but it's not going to do anything. And in fact, if we go back down to the bed by the... Oh, what do you call these? Cosmos. This is our other pumpkin and squash bed. And again, we have a few squash in there, but they're not really going to do anything. So in order to make sure I get in here and weed and give these chaps, which is perpetual spinach, a chance for the winter, I'm going to clear this bed as well and any of the perennial weeds in this bed and all of the squash plants that we take up will be going into the hot bin composter if you don't have a hot bin composter then keep your perennial weeds in a bucket and maybe drown them that uh, drown them for sort of three or four weeks and then drain them and pop them into your pallet compost bin or your Dalek compost bin. Not sure if you can hear that. That's the pitter patter splatter of rain on the shed. And the it's gone from brilliant sunshine. What's that 20 minutes ago? Half an hour ago to really grey skies and rain it sort of looks as though it's set in for an hour or so i think okay well 
I have to say, I didn't expect that. I thought I had a good window of a couple of hours of decent sunshine. No, <laughs> never mind, never mind. So I have taken out all of the squash plants. What I did notice in taking out one of the squash plants, fortunately before I took it out, there was a squash at the end of it, a cheeky prince. So I've left that one in. It's most probably, I don't know, smaller than my head. My head's quite big. <laughs> it's smaller than my head. Um, yeah, let's just, uh, I'm going to protect it now. I'm going to look after that one, see if it can actually come to fruition. But there, there is one which I hadn't seen. It's actually tucked into the celeriac, which is why I hadn't seen it. There were a few others, small ones, just sort of a bit bigger than your fist. And um, they won't really come to anything. They'll most probably end up with the chickens. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But what I'm going to do now, I've got lots of cardboard in the shed, shed that I shred shredding in the shed and uh, I'm going to turn on my radio listen to Radio 4 Extra most probably and tear up my cardboard packaging that I brought down because I don't want to go home at the moment because it's it's wet and I do want to get those squash that you just saw in the wheelbarrow into the hot bin composter so I'm just going to throw a bit of cardboard over that for the moment because I don't want too much water to get on them. And yeah, listen to the radio, shred cardboard and then go home at some point. See you again soon. Bye. Good day, back at this squash patch, which is now a perpetual spinach patch. So whilst I was weeding this yesterday, I found an awful lot of sank foil. So I think this is going to be another bed where I will look at, at some point, giving it a good fork over, like the onion, the garlic. But I did mention yesterday that I spied a cheeky prince and there it is in there. Can you see? Oh, so pleased. So I've left this plant, squash plant, in to grow. We'll see if that comes to anything, but certainly it's a nice size. Celeriac doing really well. Need to take some stalks off that for soup. But such a bright day today. Look who's over there. We've just had a walk down the canal, which was absolutely lovely. And as we were coming back, Richard said, let's just pop to the plot. Oh, let me just show you, oh, there's a bee buzzing around. This cosmos here is really doing amazingly well. So many buds on it. Obviously, it's just started flowering. <laughs> Where the others, these two here, you can see they're beginning to thin out compared to these. Those are really thinning out. But what I did notice is another colour of cosmos. So as well as the white and the sort of pinky, well crimsony over there, we've now got pink. 
all my battery's about to go. But yeah, we've now got pink, which is lovely. My battery is just about to go, so we'll leave it there. We're done. See you tomorrow. Bye. Good day. I've decided today's the day to get our onion set in. So I've just been sorting them out. Just looking at the bed down there. I'm quite happy with how it's leveled out after that raking earlier in the week. So now I'm going to start laying them out. I always lay my onion sets out on the ground before I actually put them in. Not quite sure why. Maybe it's just me being a bit OCD on trying to get everything spaced evenly. But uh, let's have a look at the onions first. Our onion sets. Some are really, really nice size. Some are considerably smaller. But what I have done is I've sorted through these and I've put to one side any that are a bit mouldy. Can you see that? There's a bit of grey um, gray mould on there. Any that are, there's just nothing in them. Um, again, that one's quite soft, so I've thrown that to one side. And again, there's a bit of damage in there. Hopefully you can see. So those are going to be going into our hot bin composter. To be frank, I wouldn't put those into our standard compost. I would just dispose of them in rubbish or municipal composting. All of these I'm happy with. I'll start with the larger ones. I mean, it makes sense to do that and lay them all out. And once I've done that, I'll, I'll show you what they look like then and explain why I've done what I've done. Okay, I have laid out all those bulbs now. I've basically given 10, 10 to 12 centimeters that way in the row between the onion sets and there's about 15 centimeters between the rows. I hand weed our onion and garlic beds. I don't use a hoe, but if you were going to use a hoe, then I would suggest a little bit wider spacing both between the sets within the row and between the rows so that you can get your hoe in there without damaging the roots of the growing bulbs. So all I've done at the moment is just space them. And now I'm going to do what you've seen me do before with other things. If we just go to this one. With my gloves on, I'm going to make a hole and just pop them in so that the tip is just below the surface. We've got seven rows of 17. So that's, I think, 119 in total. Seven sevens of 49, 49 plus 70 is, yeah, 119. Which I'd love to be doing twice that amount. But if I did twice that amount, I wouldn't have the room next year to do other things in the beds. Down here are ones that I have not used and those will be gifted to another plot holder. Right, I'm going to crack on with these and do exactly as I've done with this one here. Just push them into the ground. What you want to make sure you do, let me just get one of these. You can see, hopefully, sorry, it's not focusing, the top. No, it's not focusing. Let's go somewhere else. 
if we just look down on this one, this is where the roots will grow from. This is where the pointy bit is where the leaf will grow from. And when you push this into the ground, make a hole in the ground first, like I've just shown you, because what you don't want to do is damage this root basal plate. Because if you do, you could get fungus or other diseases in there, which will effectively damage your harvest for next year. That is all the onions in and I've just with my um, hand fork not the big fork the hand fork just leveled it off so yeah <laughs> more for neatness than anything else oh look there's a worm there come up I did notice quite a few worms in here as I was planting those into the soil so clearly the digging out has done the worm population no harm whatsoever so yeah that's the job done for the onions so that's our shakespeare onions also now called autumn champion onions next week i think i will get on well not i think i will get on next week i will get on with doing the garlic and I'm mulling this bed again now for broad beans. Tomorrow, I think I'm going to be taking the tomatoes out, which are still up here by the polytunnel. I sort of want to dig this bit over as well and do the same as I did with these two beds. Oh. I know it's going to be good in the long run so for that reason I may sort out the courgette bed over there for the broad beans but you know what there's some things in the courgette bed that can come into the flower bed but I tell you what let's do that tomorrow okay I will leave you with my relatively level onion bed bye Good day. Gosh, look at that. The sun is coming out. Um, I just thought I'd quickly mention, Annie asked yesterday about the garlic, um, not the garlic, sorry, the onions. Had I watered them after I put them in? No, I didn't. But the soil is really wet um, or very moist, let's say very moist. So I didn't water them, but if the soil had been dry or on the dry side, I certainly would have done. Let me just show you what I'm going to get on with today. That sun is really coming out now. It's been grey and now the sun's coming out. Lovely. I'll be able to take this off. This is our courgette bed. Still got some sunflowers in it. The ones that have really gone now like this one here I'll definitely be taking out and if I just move this out the way come this side this is a mallow so the courgette plant is there and this is a mallow so I'm going to pop that take it out and pop that up and then we also have these lovely forget-me-nots quite a few of those plants so that's here and here again I'm going to take those out and most probably put them into our flower bed oh look it's a tomato seedling coming up oh well, you know what I'm going to do I'm going to pop that up and put it in the polytunnel maybe even take it home see if we can overwinter it <gasps> oh excitement um calendula yeah, I'll most probably leave that in for the time being and that one over there too. But I'm going to cut back some of this hebe. Just really tidy this bed up. Because I may be using it for broad beans. 
might be and then hopefully gosh everything needs a strim again tomatoes definitely time for them to come out because this is another possibility for broad beans but the best thing to do is just crack on now get these out obviously keep the green tomatoes we'll be making more green tomato curry any that are coloring up we will keep on the windowsill and everything else is going to go into our hot bin composter no blight any sort of brown on here is just really the plants dying back but look look still wanting to grow still wanting to flower i mean yeah look i mean that's a healthy growing tip up there and what is it now the 18th of october anyway shut up paul get on That's the courgette. Gosh, this has got a deep root. That's the mallow. I think it's actually come from up underneath the cardboard at the base because there's such a deep root. a fennel just going to take these off those can go into a soup Get me not. Another forget me not, which is obvious. Another. Courgette, courgette, so the weeds I'm putting, weeds and detritus I'm putting in one and things I'm going to replant I'm putting into this tray at the side of me. to say it's lovely soil this was from our hot bin composter last year
as you can see, I sort of changed my mind on a few things. This soil is so good, but as I was going through it, I noticed, you got it, lots of bindweed. So yeah, cracked on, gave it a really good forking over, forked it over to about, well, a fork's depth, if you like. Everything that I have taken out has been replanted. So I've put some of the calendula in here. All of the forget-me-not I've put into the flower bed, our flower border bed. And I've decided this is where I'm going to do the broad beans this year. However, I'm going to need to clear this area because there's quite a lot of creeping cooch grass up there. When I say clear, I mean get my hands in and pull as much out as I can. I have pulled some cooch grass out from here, which is great. And that, oh yeah, a couple of things. Um, I've been listening to Radio 4 Extra. Here's the tomato. Obviously, I have no idea what variety it is. I assume that seed was either dropped by a creature this year or was in the survive the hot bin composter last year. But I'm going to see if I can overwinter it. There's some the fennel that I'm going to put into soups. And then what I did notice is this lavender, as you can see there is a lavender over there, was breaking off um, and it's very woody. But what there is on it, when I come to this bit, there's bits that can be, and here look, bits that can be made into cuttings. So I'm going to do that unexpected job to do today. But you know what, that's, that's what all this gardening and allotment tiering lark is about. I've left these sunflowers in. I obviously could not take them out. But yeah, once again, really pleased with this job. Now on to the tomato frames.
Okay, that's the tomatoes out and in the hot bin composter. These are rebars I put in to hold the frame that was falling over. There's a lot of lettuce in here, as you can see, and also quite a bit of weed. But there's also some of these little pansies, which I'm going to take out and move elsewhere and then just give this a really good weed. Effectively, this bit at the top here is for flowers and all of this area is for veggies and sunflowers. Right, get on my hands and knees and start sorting the weeding out now. The whole bed has had a really good weed. I've left the couple of sunflowers just here and all the lettuce in. There's a mushroom of some sort there. I'm not a fungi specialist, so I don't know what that is. I have noticed there's a couple more seedlings of lettuce here and I noticed, oh there's one down there, can you see just there? So I've taken all the calendula and plants and weeds out up to this point. As I say that's always going to be a flower area now. And I'm really glad to have got that job done. In fact, both jobs. That's a really good morning's work. I think I got down here about half 10 and it's now about half 12, going up to one o'clock. I um, thought I'd just give you a quick show of the tomatoes. Those are the rest of the tomatoes. So you can see quite a lot of green ones. I'll leave those in the shed to ripen, see if they ripen. If they don't, they'll go into a curry, as I said. These are the mallow that I've potted up from the courgette bed. So actually I've done a really, oh, I'm really pleased with this morning's jobs. Really pleased. And now I'm just going to sit on my bench, have a cup of coffee and think about what I'm going to be doing next week. See you very soon. Bye.